excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishment. Solitary confinement is the isolation of a prisoner in a separate cell as a punishment. In the eyes of the law, confining someone to a dark, dirty chamber, alone, sometimes for years, is not considered cruel and unusual punishment. What was the longest amount of time you spent in solitary confinement and what did you do? Um, disobeying a direct order and it was about 15 months, 13 months, somewhere around there, maybe in the middle. Do you think solitary confinement should be considered cruel and unusual punishment, therefore illegal? Um, yeah, it should be considered that. Um, the, if, the America considered it in the 1800s cruel and unusual punishment. They actually came to a, a census of that, but we still do it to this day. The first use of solitary confinement in a United States prison was in 1829 at Easton State Penitentiary. Their belief was that being in isolation for long enough would benefit their inmates. It would help free their good soul. In 1913, after nearly 90 years, Eastern States shut down their solitary confinement program because it was found too inhumane. But the practice remained in use in over 300 prisons around the country. Alcatraz was the first high security prison. It is also known as one of the most cruel prisons in American history. So it should come as no surprise that they had a solitary confinement block and it was used constantly. These cells were much darker than the others. They were in a separate part of the prison. Some of them didn't even have toilets or mattresses. The block stayed in active use until Alcatraz was shut down in 1963. But the practice didn't die there. It bloomed. In the 1980s, the solitary confinement block at Pelican Bay was built. And from there, in the 1990s, the boom of supermax or control unit prisons began. These are prisons for the worst criminals and all have solitary confinement units. In 2015, studies say that 80,000 to 100,000 prisoners are being held in some form of isolation. I was in two different ones. One was an all cement cell with a skylight in the ceiling. And the skylight was actually a walkway where the guards could walk over. Um, so you never got any actual sunlight unless you went outside. Um, that cell was kind of like, <laughs> it was pretty tough for the psyche. And then uh, another cell is the, the more basic one, is a window in your back cell, uh, two bunks, there's metal, um, you can see, all, and when you look out your cell door, you can actually see people like moving around. Um, so those are the two different variations of the cell Numerous studies have documented the harmful psychology effects of long-term solitary confinement, which can produce debilitating symptoms such as visual and auditorial hallucinations, hypersensitivity to noise and touch, insomnia and paranoia, uncontrollable feeling of rage and fear, distortion of time and perception, increased risk of suicide, and post-traumatic stress disorder. For juveniles and the mentally ill, these effects are magnified, and yet they made up one-third of all prisoners in isolation in 2015. In early July 2013, there was a hunger strike started by a group of prisoners from Pelican Bay Solitary Confinement. It was a strike to get a five-year limit on isolation, and it had over 30,000 California prisoners participate. After 60 long days, the strike succeeded in getting established time limits in solitary confinement in California. In recent years, there have been many legal cases regarding solitary confinement, which have led to a change in federal law. It is now harder to isolate prisoners for long periods of time, particularly for women who are recently or are currently pregnant, minors, and the disabled. Many good step forwards have been taken, but there are still many more to take. For instance, getting rid of solitary confinement altogether, focusing on rehabilitation, and finding a new, more humane way to punish inmates who misbehave.